what's going on everybody? Well, we're back for another video today. And, well, <laughs> we went out to the reptile show and I was looking for a specific type of animal. And uh, unfortunately, they did not have that animal. But what they did have is something I have been looking for for a very long time. So I'm super excited about this video because I had been looking for this particular type, and, and it's over here just freaking out, but I've been looking for this particular type of animal for some time, and they've just been so expensive online. I'm like, I, I don't know if I want to buy them just yet. I'm not quite ready for them. So I walk in, and I guess the guy that was selling them just decided that he was done and, and wanted to go home for the day at the reptile show, so he gave me a fantastic deal on them, and well, that's what's leading into this video today. So I'd like to first introduce you to Dewberry. And Dewberry is a vampire crab that happens to be a male. And what comes along with Dewberry, well, is his girlfriend, Dorothy. And Dorothy is also a vampire crab, and she happens to be a female. Now, they don't have quite a normal relationship, see? They like to mix it up a little bit, if you will. And, well, Dewberry is just not very, uh, what would you say, loyal or monogamous. So he also has another girlfriend named Bertha. And amongst the three of them, we got Dewberry, Dorothy, and Bertha, and they're gonna live happily ever after in their new enclosure where hopefully they produce all kinds of offspring for us because what they do is they actually produce live baby crabs. They're not like where if you've seen my video of me trying to successfully breed fiddler crabs, and by the way, I did terrible at it. It was not successful, but that's a whole nother story. But unlike fiddler crabs who lay these larval type offspring in the water column that then develop later on into crabs and things of that nature. These are much easier apparently. That is because they lay eggs and hatch live babies essentially. So by the time you realize that they have bred and had babies, you already have little baby crabs running all over your container. That's the idea behind this and that's what we're going to try to accomplish. So in order for us to get this accomplished, the first thing we need to do is set up some sort of DIY been set up for breeding these vampire crabs for profit because I can tell you right now based on the normal price of these if we can get babies out of these we can make some decent money off of these vampire crabs. First thing we have to do we need to run out to Walmart and get some sort of a bin structure so I will pick you back up at Walmart. All right well what we're going to be building this with for these little vampire crabs is going to be this hefty tub. It's 113 quart. It'll give us plenty of room for these guys to have both a terrestrial and water area. So let's get this and get going. We have our bin. Now let's go ahead and get this thing fully cleaned out because well it's a plastic bin and it's been at Walmart and we have no idea who's touched it or what's been inside of it and we don't want to kill our crabs. So let's get it washed out. Now the thing about these vampire crabs is they are actually semi-aquatic. So what we're going to have to do is build them kind of a half land. Well it's not even half. It's more like a 80-20 mix of land and water. So what I'm gonna do is start by laying down a very base level of sand because these guys do actually like to burrow into some sand. So we just want a very thin layer of sand right across the bottom of this tub here. So how I'm gonna build this terrestrial area, we're actually gonna build a terrestrial area over three quarters of the way of this particular bin. And that is because they spend more time on land than they do in the water. The way I'm going to accomplish this is pretty simple. I'm gonna just take some of these flat stones and I'm gonna lay these down here and start building up a type of structure that gives us a base where we can then come back and put a land mass over top of it. Now what I'm doing here is just filling in this back area with some drainage rock. I want a nice drainage area that will be underneath this land mass. And this drainage rock is super cheap and I have tons of it. I just wanna fill in as much as I can with this. All right, so now that I have the land area started here, what I'm gonna do 
is I want to take a piece of weed barrier and lay it down to separate the soil from the water. With the weed barrier in place, I want to come back in with a little more sand, just a very light dusting of it, just to hold this weed barrier in place. What the weed barrier will do, it will actually keep the land area from flowing down inside of the water. So now that we have a nice little thin layer here, we can now start to look at blocking this off from up here. And the way we want to do that is just come back in with some larger rocks and just building a barrier like this. Now before this gets too heavy, I want to get this into a place where it's going to sit permanently. Now on top of this sand or this land area here, we're also going to sprinkle a bunch of activated carbon and the reason for that is is when we water these plants we want this activated carbon to keep all of the water that drains back down into that drainage layer we want it to keep it nice and clean so we're just going to mix this in with this sand really well like this and we'll get a little bit more in there as well now we're going to come back on top here with some organic potting material it does not contain any type of fertilizers or anything of that nature and the nice thing about this organic material is it's mostly cocoa fiber which is good it makes a great terrarium style mix all right well now that we have this fully wet and down we want to go ahead and plant our terrestrial plants we have a white vein plant we also have a red vein plant Another red vein plant here. Those should do really well in here because they don't require a whole bunch of light. These have been growing in a tub with just the light from this room for a couple of months now and they're doing fantastic. I also have this Selaginella, which I believe is how you say it. And it looks a little bad, but we're gonna see if this thing will recover in here. I think it got overly saturated where it was sitting and had started to kind of wilt. But we're gonna put this thing in here and just see if we can get this thing to come back. I have a whole bunch of this pennywort growing in my moss propagation system. So we're gonna plant some of this in here and let this stuff take off. Hopefully this stuff does really well in here too. I'm sure it will since it's doing so well in that moss propagation system. So with that, I think we'll start with that for terrestrial plants, just see how they do with them. And if you know something happens where they tear them up or whatever, then we'll move to something different. But we'll start with that. You always wanna have a good amount of plants in your terrestrial as well as your aquatic section. So we're gonna leave these in here, but let's go ahead and finish out the scape on this terrestrial area. And what I wanna do is just sprinkle some of this reptobark down in here. This will definitely help with keeping moisture up in this terrestrial area. We'll also use it to kind of hide our black weed barrier. Go ahead and spray this down really well, get it nice and saturated. And go ahead and add some dried sphagnum moss as well, just to give it some aesthetic, which will also help with moisture retention. Now with that, I do believe we're done with the exception of just adding some water to this thing and getting the filtration set up. Now, as far as filtration goes, what I'm gonna be using is just a standard internal filter that you can buy at Walmart or the pet store. These things are super cheap. It's like $10, but it'll do up to 40 gallons and they're pretty efficient. I've used these in my turtle enclosures and other things and they work pretty well. These crabs actually do not like a lot of flow. So that's one of the reasons I went with this particular filter because it doesn't have a whole lot of flow. All right, let's get some water in this thing. And now that we have water in here, we want to go ahead and treat this water with some dechlorinator. And what we like to use here in the fish room is API Stress Coat Plus, which will remove both chloramine and chlorine from the water, making it safe for aquatic life. And now that this water is dechlorinated, we also want to treat it with some beneficial bacteria. This water is going to be a little dirty until it starts to settle down. But 
We're gonna go ahead and add some API quick start, which allows for the bacteria cycle to go ahead and start immediately. And then we'll let this cycle for just a little bit before we start adding these crabs. Now, one of the things I wanna do is go ahead and add some aquatic plants to the water section. For aquatic plants, what we're gonna add are two things. Number one is we're gonna float a java fern in there, as well as we are going to put a little bit of floating hornwort in there, both which are very good to help remove the nutrients from the water and keep the water nice and clean, as well as the tank that these are in is full of bladder snails. And honestly, these crabs will eat bladder snails, so hopefully they populate in here instead and, and give the crabs something good to eat. Now looking at this, we have a nice little step up for them to get up into their land mass. There's a couple of little cave structures under here that they can get up underneath, but they've got about 20%, 25% of this bin is water area for them. And then the other 75 to 80% is all land mass, which is what you really want to have for these vampire crabs. So this thing has been completely set up and is ready to go. So we're gonna let it cycle and then we'll add these crabs in a couple of days. All right, well, we have this thing fully cycled and ready to go. You can tell the water's cleared up significantly and this thing is ready for these crabs. Well, without further ado, let's get old Dewberry in here. His name's Bob. His name is Dewberry. And there goes Dewberry. So Dewberry is making his way around and here comes Dewberry's first love. And that is none other than Dorothy. And Dorothy's taking off. She's trampling the plants, of course. And little Max Robert's gonna put Dewberry's second girlfriend in here, Bertha May. Bertha May. Bertha May. And there goes old Bertha May. And they have now entered their new home. And there goes old Bertha May and she is going right for the water and there she goes, right into the water. Looking around, trying to figure out what they want to do. And here goes old Dewberry. And Dewberry's going right for the water as well. And straight down in there, he feels the water. Feels nice, doesn't it, Dewberry? Sliding off in there. And there he goes. He's going over to check out what old Bertha's doing. It's like, hey Bertha, get out of the guys, way. Well, hopefully you went on to enjoy this and hopefully you guys like this new setup with all of our new vampire crabs, which are Dewberry, Dorothy, and Bertha May. And we hope they give us all kinds of babies. And if you notice over there, oh, Bertha May's trying to escape, but that's okay. She's not gonna get out. We're gonna actually put this top on there in just a minute to keep them in here and safe. But this thing turned out epic, and what a great DIY bin for breeding vampire crap. So make sure you subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss the updates on these guys, but we're super excited to have them. So with that, hopefully you guys went on to enjoy this video. Hopefully you enjoy this brand new setup for these vampire crabs. Make sure you subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you do not miss the content coming out here on the Christopher Scott channel because right now there is a tank right behind this camera that's been fully scaped and is ready for fish and you're going to see that coming up very soon. The water box aquarium for anybody that's been around for a while it's ready to go and we have all kinds of things coming out very soon. So make sure you follow us on Instagram. Make sure you follow us on Facebook. You can find links to all of those in the description below, as well as visit the csbrand.com. Put in your email address so you can find out when the launch is gonna happen, so you can pick up your arowana or angelfish merchandise, as well as coming soon is the Big Head Fred Flower Horn merchandise. So with all that guys, we truly hope you enjoy this and we are truly grateful for each and every one of you. And with that, we will see you next time.